Ann S. Paul. Tom E. And the North Carolina Generally, General Assembly. May they be compassionate. We have a chant for moving into silence in a moment. But first, we want to highlight the touchstone. Okay. Oh. The touchstone of the week is what is offered in community is by invitation, not demand. This is not a share or die space. Do whatever your soul calls for and know that you do it with our support. Your soul knows your needs better than we do. So our chant, are you going to lead us? So is the Jesus remember me when you come into your kingdom? Remember me when you come into your kingdom, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom, Jesus, Pray in the language and tradition of your choosing as we join together in the prayer Jesus taught. Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite you to share a sign of peace with those around you or others on Zoom. Hello, everyone. Hey. Peace. 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 Everybody. Peace. Peace, everybody. Hey, Francie. Hello. Hey, Peggy. Hi. Hey, Tony. Peace. Hey, Terry. Peace. Peace. Hello, everybody. Terry. Thank you. Adelaide. Hey, Peggy. Hey, Adelaide. Hey, how are you doing? Peace. I'm Good doing okay. Hi, both Stallings. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Peace. Hey, Tony. Everyone. Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> 
Tony, where are you? I'm in Cleveland, Ohio. Cleveland, Ohio. Ah. This week. <laughs> this week? <laughs> this I often, um, about once a month, I spend a week helping take care of my mom in South Florida. Ah, okay. Yeah. Wow, that's a trip. Hi, Vivian. Hey. Wow. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. I didn't get to see my cousin Jen this week. She said she's staying away from me because she's got this really bad cold. Back on to our celebrations. Oops. Since um, <coughs> I'm with you next week, would you be willing to stand, Sarah? Sarah Bryant has been um, accepted into the U.S. Foreign Service. <laughs> And we'll be getting settled in Washington, D.C. in the weeks ahead. And so maybe just in a gesture of blessing, holy and merciful God, we know you are constantly anointing Sarah and all of us with your presence and power and, and encouragement. Um, this is a mere acknowledgement of that truth that you go with her as she embarks on this new vocational journey. Amen. We um, invite forward Tyson to share with us in witness this morning. Good morning. Um, first off, I would like to thank my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, for this opportunity to be able to share with Parkway. Secondly, I would like to thank Parkway. Hopefully, I do not wear my welcome after this speech. And um, <laughs> um, my experience in a nutshell can be summed up in Philippians chapter 2, verse 4, which reads, Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. This truth was not present in my adolescent years. Growing up in a poverty-stricken neighborhood in Queens, New York, held many economic, social, emotional, and mental disadvantages, as some of you may know. As a youth, I was instructed to focus solely on my interests and the interests of my largely populated African-American community. This so-called ideology had become a mantra of sorts and a banner of a declaration against the white supremacy, or so I thought. It wasn't long before I had become indoctrinated by this teaching and my mind was corrupted to believe that my focus should solely stay on those who shared the same color pigment as me. However, it was not long before Jesus met me in my darkness and saved my life. Soon after, Jesus shattered all former realities and stigmas attached to the reality of focusing solely on my, on my interests. Instead, Jesus had broadened my understanding by disp displaying the true definition of community. In the Garden of Gethsemane, as Jesus Christ was confronted with agony and despair before his arrest, Jesus Christ had a choice to make. Two paths lay before him. Jesus could have chosen to focus solely on his interests and the interests of his community by preserving his life. Instead, he chose to focus on the interests of humanity, and in doing so, he surrendered himself. Facing death, fear, discomfort, and sorrow, Jesus Christ denied his own personal happiness to, and seek to fulfill the joy of not only the Father, but joy of all who will go on to believe in his name. Now, some of you may ask, why is that? Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2 explains why. Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus Christ understood that there was a joy greater than any pain he could face. There is a joy in meeting the needs of others. There is a joy in satisfying the interests of others. When serving others and standing up to all types of injustices, there is a joy that awaits all who partake. The IAF and their affiliates understand this joy and the importance of focusing on the self-interest of others. 
Therefore, certain members of Parkway, with myself included, have decided to commit ourselves to the vision of combining our efforts with a broad-based organization, aligning ourselves with other institutions of all faith so together we may go across the spectrum of injustices. That is what community truly looks like. So there are two paths that lay before us. One path leads to happiness, which sometimes can be an illusion, filled with more lows than highs. Our careers present much happiness due to our accolades, promotions, and further advancements. Some may even dare to say that they built companies that are still thriving to this day. However, with any pursuit, obstacles are imminent. And those obstacles appear, and once those obstacles appear, the illusion then fades away. Yet there is another path, a path that leads to joy. Joy being eternal can never fade away. Focusing on the interests of others, though it may seem troublesome at first, the burden is far lighter and much easier to bear. Investing into the self-interest of others is not only meaningful and fulfilling, but recipients go on to share the news of that generous offering for generations to come. Joy exists outside of time, and those who go on to seek it will soon find out that joy does not only exist outside of time, but that joy too is contagious, affecting generation after generation. Joy is the path we should take, placing our own interests on the back burner as a sacrifice unto God, and walking down the path with the expectation of joy. My mentor, Steve Boyd, Pastor Craig Schaub, and Karen Binkley, and all who are associated with establishing this broad-based organization. These people are not merely constructing a hall where plaques and trophies could be displayed. All those mentioned above seek to build a sanctuary where joy can rest, and only when the interest of others is met can that sanctuary be filled. Also during my experience, I came across a new reality outside of focusing on the self-interest of others a new reality that is centered around the core principle which the IAF and their affiliates base their operations on, and that is power. I learned the word power had many connotations, which were due to the interpreter's experience with the word. Some cringed. I know I did when I first heard it due to my past failures with power and my experience with power. While others were familiar with the word and went on to embrace the challenge, once the word power was cleansed for us, we were instructed that the true definition of power is to act. Once we received that wisdom, we were able to self-evaluate and come to the realization that power is not just a word, but it's a tool. When many people come together as a collective, there is a power unknown to many due to racial and social divides. And when that power is assembled, then and only then will we be able to stand against all the injustices of our community. Jesus Christ's ability to act out power blessed us with salvation. The apostles' ability to act out power blessed us with the establishment of the first of the church or the early churches. And if it had not been for them, there would be no church to sit in. And if it had not been for Martin Luther King and evangelist Billy Graham acting out their power during the 1960s civil rights movement, then segregation would still be an unaddressed injustice. Now the time has come upon us. Do we sit idle, remain comfortable, or do we focus on the self-interest of others and exercise our God-given ability to act? Speaking for self, I have decided to utilize power by aligning myself with a structured, broad-based organization who understands the importance of power and is willing to utilize that power righteously against all injustices within Winston-Salem. Focusing on the interests of others and sending aid to their cry it's not only what true community looks like, but it's a path that we should all take. Amen. Not up here. <laughs> Some of us haven't um, been able to uh, be brought up to speed with that. IAF is a national um, it is a national organization that basically comes together and they uh, assemble all institutions, whether it be uh, 
institutions that are associated with Christianity, Muslim faiths, anything. We all come together as a collective. They help uh, build affiliates. And in doing so, they address injustices within that region. So we had the opportunity, um, all of us here, to be able to um, go to a couple of workshops. And they started the process of building a broad-based organization. And for me, it's a life-changing experience. Once um, my mentor, Steve Boyd, he invited me, and it changed my life. Um, I've been able to travel to Chicago and travel to um, Raleigh to attend. And they have many different principles that can help us and address the injustices within this area and on a large, a larger scale. So um, yeah, that's sort of what it is. They help a lot of nonprofits come together and we're building a nonprofit here. Oh, Industrial Areas Foundation. Industrial Areas Foundation. If you would like to know more about it, I'm reading a book called Lessons Learned by Arnie Graff. It's amazing. It really is. I'll tell you about it after. <laughs> All right. I think we'll keep Tyson, don't you? <laughs> Our scripture reading today comes from the first chapter of John. It's verses 35 through 39. And what we have printed in our bulletin is the New Revised Standard Version. The next day, John, and this is John the Baptist, again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he exclaimed, Look, here is the Lamb of God. The two disciples heard John say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, <clears throat> What are you looking for? And they said to him, Rabbi, teacher, where are you staying? And he said to them, come and see. <clears throat> they came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about 4 o'clock in the afternoon. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
So um, Theo and Ada and Francois, I've got a question for you. Two choices. One choice would be, and I, I can imagine what you might say about the first choice, Theo, is if we all came into a room and I said, we're all going to play with a Rubik's Cube. Or the other choice would, over here, there's Rubik's Cubes, different sizes, different colors. Over here, there's um, plates where you can play with water, different types of uh, boats and stuff. Over here, there are Legos. Over here, there are lots of different costumes and hats and and um, wands and, and all kinds of different things that you can play dress up. Which one of those experiences would you prefer? The one where you could only play with Rubik's Cube or all of the other possibilities? What do you say, Ada? All the other possibilities. How about you, Francois? Yeah. Yes, the same. I'll ask you, Theo, what would you, what would you prefer? Probably the same. The same, even though you love Rubik's Cubes, you would like all of those different choices, huh? Well, that's what kind of our, our touchstone, our, our guide word is for today. We, in, we are, do participate in church and other things here by invitation, not by demand, not by saying everybody has to do this one thing at the same time. Does that make sense? So um, in, in, I want you to imagine in your class if a teacher were to start the day every day with this poem that hopefully Astor can get up on the screen. Thanks for coming up and per participating with me. I appreciate it. I needed your help today. So there's a teacher who starts class every morning with this poem with her students. There is no such thing as a safe space. We exist in the real world. We all carry scars and have caused wounds. This space seeks to turn down the volume on the world outside and amplify the voices that have to fight to be heard elsewhere. This space will not be perfect. It will always be what, it will not always be what we wish it to be, but it is our space together and we will work on it side by side. It strikes me every Sunday when we gather and we engage in that little back and forth litany, you are welcome here. We can, we can take down the slides for a little bit. Thanks so much, Aster. Uh, that it's a pretty tall order that we declare. I ask myself every Sunday, can we do it? Can I do it? Can we live out what we are proclaiming we want to do? In the Gospel of John, Early on, the passage that Lisa just read, the disciples of John come and ask Jesus some things, and Jesus says, what are you looking for? Now, in the original language, that's a, a double meaning, a double entendre. The phrase is not just, uh, what are you curious about? It's, what is the core of who you are? What are you most valuing? And then Jesus says to them, when they ask where he's staying, he says, come and see. Once again, come and see is not, this is where I lay my head. Because in the Gospel of John, that little word abide is very, very powerful. It's as if to say, this is where I'm going to remain steadfast. This is where I'm going to hang my hat on relationship and spiritual connection and power, Tyson. This is where the power is. 
when we say you are welcome here, we are just saying, okay, come and be a part of what is here. We are engaged in very, a very risky invitation one to another to come as full selves in the process of creating something transformative together. What is in the, uh, in the process of becoming as that invitation is offered one to another. I think we all wish for a sense of being bonded, you know, uh, being on common ground with people who believe the same thing or express that belief in a very similar way or even act out that belief in the world in the same way. But in truth, that's not really what we're about here. Our purpose is to open up a courageous space so that each one of us can encounter the beauty and the resourcefulness of sacred presence in all if of its amazing diversity. To be known in our authentic self and then to find hope that we can be in part of some kind of transformation in the world. And in that encounter then I sense that we can find communion. I hope you see the distinction I'm trying to draw. I have no expectation that each and every one of you are going to understand who Jesus of Nazareth is in the exact same way that I do, or that you all are going to have the same favorite song or hymn that I do, or that you're all going to choose your favorite sacred text, whether that's in the Bible or not, as I do. Some of us come to faith with this utter conviction. Maybe we've been through the ringer of life and we've had a second naivety and we are steadfast in proclaiming what we believe. And then there's other of us all life long who wrestle with doubt and hard questions. And simply by standing in the tension, we stand in a sense of faithfulness. And then there's others of us who have pretty much given up on the tradition, but we kind of hang, hang in there with community because we have this indescribable sense of something by coming together to breathe together, to sing, to smell each other's presence, even if that's a box on Zoom. There's something about it that still draws us. The true gift, I think, of a non-doctrinal, bottom-up confession like we are part of called the United Church of Christ is that at our best, we are engaged in invitation and not demand. When we're at our best. Because theologically, you don't have to go through and check off a bunch of boxes in order to fully participate in the life of spiritual community. It also can mean, though, that you can kind of slink off without getting noticed very much, that there's not a lot right here to hold one another accountable to hanging in there, to remaining in relationship. So we have to create that organically with one another. In all of the gifts of the tradition we receive, it doesn't mean that we necessarily offer welcoming space or safe space or woke space. We have to work on it all of the time by acknowledging our failures, by acknowledging our blind spots, even by leaning into the realization that we don't even know, always know what it means to amplify voices that have to fight to be heard. So much of our work is with our own self. Can I continue to participate in spiritual community by receiving the invitation rather than the demand that I place upon the experience? I mean, the demand on what I used to believe or the demand on what used to be the experience of this particular spiritual community. Which... At one time, 
I found great fulfillment and reward with. But it might no longer be feasible. We may no longer be capable of it. It might no longer have the same kind of meaning it once did. So can we show up not just for each other, but for our own selves without the expectations of what it is I'm going to experience today in this community? I've spent a lot of time with the data collected by the vision team this past fall in September and October. And I've enjoyed really paying attention to the, your fondest memories of the past parkways. You know, like the big weekend retreat at Johns Valley River Camp. Oh, those were the days. <laughs> or church school classes in every nook and cranny of this space, this building or the trips to Central America, or the Christmas programs, the Advent workshops. There's a bit of n romantic nostalgia about some of those things, I think. They're beautiful. And I hope you can hold on to the life that has been given to you in encountering them. And, you know, it's okay to grieve that they may not happen in the same way they once did. It's important for us as a community to make space for one another to grieve what is not here that once was. The vision team had, a, had some real conversation about this last week. And well, I heard somebody say, well, those were great times, but you know, that was 20 years ago. I don't want to go uh, uh, sleep on some rustic bunk or in the dew uh, next to the river at John's River Valley Camp like I did then. And so it's important for us to acknowledge this sense of loss that we may experience as a community insofar as it creates more space for us to celebrate the life the purposefulness, the gifts of the Spirit that are being received and experienced in this place, in this time, right now. So I invite you, in the days ahead, we've got this beautiful prayer wall that, that Lisa and Marlon concocted in the hallway, in this building, and even if you're on Zoom, come on by and write down and tuck in the, in the bricks of that wall things, the memories that you're kind of grieving about your Parkway experience. This is our uh, Great 100 Days PowerPoint. This is how we're collecting data. So that we can all hold that with you, those experiences, that we can acknowledge those things with you. But also, what are the things that you celebrate about your experiences in this community right now? It doesn't have to be the same as what somebody else in, this, in, in these pews or in those squares is experiencing. What is your celebration? Church looks so differently than it did even a couple of years ago. I think we've all acknowledged that. One way to switch up this touchstone for today is to say, participation is by invitation, not by desperate plea. <laughs> we focus on where the energy is, and we give one another permission to let go of what is no longer possible, or at least makes meaning and builds relationship rather than just making us exhausted. You may believe that Parkway UCC is the tiniest congregation in, on the land, not able to do very much. But within the United Church of Christ, we are perfectly average. So, if, Asher, you can put up a, a couple of slides. That I, want, I want you to, to know this in the data. So, um, this is the first one. 
this is like congregational size, and we're actually a little bit ahead of what, it, what is median, which is interesting. This is 2020. Things have changed a little bit, but I think they're still pretty relevant. So that's an interesting piece. We say we're really old in an average age. And you know what the average age is across the United Church of Christ now? 59 years old. That's the average age. Let's move to the next slide. So average membership, 160. Average attendance in worship, 52. In person, in the pews, 36. Number of confirmations, a little over one. Transfers in, under one. Average deaths, around four. Average transfers out, 1.2. This is Parkway United Church of Christ right here, my folks. When we embrace who we are demographically and spiritually and physically, we can relax and lean into the invitation rather than the expectation, the demand. This is what we have to be. This is what we have to do as a spiritual community. And when we can relax and we can celebrate what actually is giving us life together right now, we offer an invitation that draws others in with their own authenticity rather than say, we expect you to experience this with us. So here are just a couple of ideas that were part of our conversation uh, about eight weeks ago in the leaders gathering. And this isn't to say, this is what we are going to do, but this isn't. Uh, to create an imagination, to prime the pump of what might be possible. We are already making this shift. We've been doing our Lenten study, really for the first time in person, at 4.30 in the afternoon. Kind of hedging that if you're working, you might be able to get off a little early and show up, but also trying to get most people out before it completely gets dark. We've already in, in, encountered in some really solid conversations some possibilities of partnership with Piedmont Environmental Alliance, Triad Restorative Justice, Forsyth Audubon Society, the Shepherd Center. We have yet to really spend time with senior services, but we know Reverend Griffin, and she is at the heart of their new construction of a building and all of the services of, that will be provided intergenerationally there. We've talked some about becoming a center for wellness and meaning making. We already have yoga on Wednesday nights. We're already offering uh, up space for day retreats. Uh, some folks spent all day in Reiki here this past week. We used to do a film series. We're already doing Courage of Trust Circles. We're already doing mental health outreach. We're doing Soul of Aging and other experiences that help us connect with spirituality in this part of life for some of us. We're developing a parallel congregation of the wild church with all of our rituals outdoors. To move to the next slide. Uh, we've had some conversations about a monthly theme, storytelling, uh, coffee house, maybe interspersed with music and other things. Our climate justice and creation care team is now a member of the third act, which is people 55 and older supporting young adults in their efforts to address climate crisis. We haven't yet, but it would be maybe helpful for us to talk with other congregations what it means to have not just older adult ministries, but older adult ministries that are still engaged in the things that this congregation is always engaged in as an open and affirming, just peace, uh, immigrant welcoming congregation. Maybe some of you have encountered uh, chapters in other cities of a group called SAGE, which is for people 50 and older who are, who are LGBTQIA. There is an active group in Raleigh. Uh, they call themselves something else, but the national organization is SAGE. What happens if we were an impetus? We focus our wise initiatives on mental health, in part 
with people in the second half of life. And what uh, Tyson just spoke about, we discern how we participate in broad-based organizing given our energy and our capacity and our physicality in ways that make meaning for people at Parkway, who we are, where we are in life. Invitation, not demand. We don't create a safe space, but we are about creating a space that allows each one of us to lean into courage so that we might be about our own transformation, but at the same time, in some ways, being part of the transformation of our wider community. Thanks be to God. Amen. So hopefully we can um, share a recorded musical response.
aren't we glad that Jeannie feels invited you know, to share the music that she can make out in a piano. And I'm grateful for all the ways that we um, are invited to, to bring our gifts and bring our abilities and our interests, you know, into this experience of community with one another, uh, whether it's music or um, art, the arts, or it's, it's cooking or, you know, what, uh, being able to interact with people and being invitational. I think about Steve inviting Tyson, you know, what a, what a wonderful connection that was made there. You know, and we all have those things that we can offer to one another, including, of course, our financial uh, resources as well. But today I really want to celebrate, you know, what we offer one another and what we offer to God um, in all the ways that we in, uh, enter into the, the experience of the Parkway welcome. Um, I'm grateful. Uh, and I hope that you are as well. Amen. Thank you, Lisa. Just a couple of quick announcements. Um, my notes are gone, but I will bring up from memory. Next, next weekend, I will be in Michigan officiating at my nephew's wedding Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And so if you've got a, a urgent pastoral care concern, Lisa will be on call. Um, Reverend Michelle Johnson will be preaching next Sunday. And then right after the service, stick around for a short congregational meeting to extend a call to Michelle as our associate pastor. All of this has really already taken place, but we want to formalize that now that we have a, an official call agreement. Right after church today, or, you know, check in with people and head on down the hall, there's a justice team meeting with some, I hear, some really good lentil soup. You don't have to ever have been part of justice team before to come and be part of the conversation. Um, we're, our Lenten Study series continues in a hybrid way, Thursdays at 4.30. Uh, Wednesday, a week from this Wednesday, the 22nd, at 6.15, outdoors, weather permitting, we are going to be doing our ritual for the spring equinox with fire and water and your intentions for growth this season. Oh, uh, Friday. This Friday, starting at 5 o'clock in the Fellowship Hall, there will be a celebration with music and, I believe, food of St. Patrick's Day. So come on out um, this Friday evening here at Parkway. Yes? There will be a children's choir rehearsal here in the sanctuary right after. So um, we have one other announcement. And then after that announcement, we will bid farewell to our online congregation with the hope that you will use this time to build a sense of communion and anointing with one another in that venue. And we, each of us, anyone, is welcome to come forward, if you're in the sanctuary, to light a candle with a prayer or intention, to share in communion or receive anointing. So we bless all of these rituals and elements that help us feel connected to the sacred and to one another. Uh, so we've got a wise team announcement. Well, hey, Peggy. How you doing? I'm good. Listen, have you heard anything about the May retreat that the Wise Team's putting Actually, together? Actually, yes. Actually, I have, and I am really excited about it. It's on May the 13th. That's on a Saturday, and it's for one day, and anybody can come. Have you registered for it? I have. You have? I have. Well, I've been thinking about it, you know, procrastinating, but 
why are you going? What's well? What, what's when I when I read through what was what the reason for it was was to have fun, to awaken my spirit, which I didn't know was asleep, and um, to laugh, to hike, and sing, and and eat good food. They have good food there. And um, also just kind of a reunion for me because I look at that place. That is a beautiful place right in the middle of a forest. But I've gone there many times and I always left feeling very calm and grateful that I could be there. It's a beautiful place and that we have the opportunity to go there to do maybe some Tai Chi or talk to a tree or um, whatever we might be invited to do. It's, we've just got some ways to encourage good things to do for our mental health. You know, that sounds like a lot of fun. I think it will be. Yeah, being able to Go hang out in a place like that, yeah. connect with people, connect with nature. So what do I have to do to sign up? Well, when I signed up, um, I, I saw in the newsletter there was uh, an invitation. To, and if you were interested in going, you just push that button on the computer and you get something that looks like an email to the church. And I just finished writing the email and said, I'm coming. And so I'm signed up. I bet I was the first one to sign up <laughs> to. I want you to sign up. I'm going to. You and know? I want you all to sign up. I think and I'm the, and I think our I'm... friends on Zoom, I want them to sign up. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm going to do it today. Oh, good. good. You're a good person. Thanks, Peggy. <laughs> <laughs> Rise as you are able for a closing hymn and feel free to receive in ritual as we sing over my head. Hello, people. Oh, hey. Hey. Hey, hey Francie. Hi, how are hey. you? Good. Well, hey, everybody. I got to go to that justice team. I'm going to be there by Zoom because I have company, but um, I need to go get ready for that and get on. I okay. guess. Bye. I'm going to see you. Say hello and goodbye. Uh, okay. Bye. Yeah. Hey, Anna. Hey. I'm on my phone. I don't know. <laughs> and it's about to die. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. I can't. Oh, there's Diane. Yeah. Diane, who are you? Uh, pretty good. I mean, you know, after 12 days out, it's going okay. But I have to get up. I can't sit here any longer. <laughs> I sat a long time, so oh. got to get get up and move around a little bit and do some exercise. So yeah, has your has fun. your kitty cat been taking care of you? Yes, yeah, she's been with me all the time. Yeah, good. <laughs> Doing great. Good to see everyone. Thanks for all your well wishes, everybody. Sounds good. Hey, Jeannie, right. that was Take great care. music. Thank you. It really was. We enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I painted the brush she paints with piano keys. <laughs> yeah, I, I miss um, seeing everybody actually being at Parkway. And, uh, you know, I thought, well, I should tune in today to see what's going on, to see how my music fits Good in. The rest of it. I understand sometimes all of it doesn't come through, but today it did.
That was yeah. wonderful. It was a wonderful. I do appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Beautiful. Love that piece. That's a beautiful piece by Haydn. Um, and it's in a minor key for Lent. Um, and also uh, my mother-in-law, who Rick's mother, who has been um, in hospice for a couple of weeks, um, just passed away at almost age 97. She was playing oh. football with the family in my front yard, um, not this past Christmas, but the Christmas mm -hmm. before that at age 95. So, um, <laughs> and I really wanted her to hear this piece. <clears throat> her um, her husband, Rick's father played piano and of course Rick did too. And she sang, but she appreciated the classical music. So um, in a strange way, I was actually practicing the piece when she passed away and I thought, oh. mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> maybe she heard it, but I don't really believe that. <laughs> but you know, it's it's an interesting thought anyway, so. It was nice. The internet connection went out there for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jamie, don't discount that possibility. I know I won't. I won't. Absolutely. It's a good, it's a good thought anyway. Yeah. And it was wonderful to be able to share it with um, all of my friends at, at Parkway. Yes, it was. Beautiful. Tony, how are you? I'm I'm well. I'm um I'm back in Cleveland for a few weeks. You know, I, I spent about a week every month with my mom down in in uh, Miami, and um, I'm good. I'm glad to be here. While we're just in the very early stages of spring, you know the uh, snowdrops are up, and some of the crocuses are just trying Ooh, to emerge. Pretty. In between, um, you know, our weather patterns are very disrupted here, so <laughs> it goes from 60 degrees to, which is super unusually high here to. Usually it's in the 30s at this time of year. Any and, snow? Uh, I kind of missed we did. seeing that here. We had we had snow Friday night and Saturday. Uh, uh, after 60 degrees on Wednesday and Thursday. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's Disruptive it's messing with the, right. <laughs> it's messing with the plants and animals here. But it's great. I'm glad to be back here for a bit and um, good work with with colleagues here in person. I do what I can in person when I'm back in Cleveland and bunch up things to do in person. Yeah. 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 And my mom is, uh, I, she may be going into hospice soon or not. It's hard to, hard to know, but um, her lungs are giving out. She's had uh, 94 and survived wow. two bouts of breast cancer and the radiation, you know, treatments are have caught up over wow. the years, I guess, with her lungs. But we're really fortunate we've had her with us. So, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I'm well. Thanks. Well, well. able to, you know, and and most of the time she's pretty cognizant. Um, so we have a little ritual. I call her before bedtime and ask her what she's hoping to dream about. And uh, sweet. Yeah, it's wonderful. Sometimes, like recently, this past week. Yeah, it's, it's good stuff. Thanks for asking. How y'all doing? Yeah, we appreciate you being with us every week. Or some uh, I, do, I do it when I can, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. And, it's, and for those, I just want to say thanks again to those for congregation making it possible for things like whether we joined in or not, I was able to join in... Uh, the 915 uh, virtual experience with the encounter with lynchings and reflecting upon that is very powerful. And it was especially powerful looking back at it, being able to do it together like this. Um, it's made room for just a lot of humane wrestling with it in good company. And I really appreciate that. Thanks. That was at the 915 thing, huh? Yeah. So, rats, I slipped right through. <laughs> well, Peggy, do you still have a cast on? I still have a cast on. Oh, poor thing. When are you okay. supposed to get it off? Do you have any idea? I'll find out Tuesday, maybe. I go to the doctor then, and he'll x ray again to see how it's getting along. Oh, good. I have a good idea to be in at least another month. Wow. I'm sure you're tired of it. Yes, ma'am. 
<laughs> Tired of Amy, this stuff. How are you? Hmm? How are you, Ann Mackey? Oh, no. can't hear you. Unmute. Mute. I want to know if you're painting. You're still muted, Ann. Can't hear you. Hey, Emily. <laughs> How's Robert, Anna? Um, Robert is still dealing with a swollen foot, fighting this virus. Oh, man. I didn't know about that. Well, he has a wound that he's had for over three years. Hi, yi, yi. And then he um, got a virus in his foot. So his foot was all swollen. He had fever. His legs began with swelling too. So mm -hmm. he's dealing with stuff. Nice and there's drawing, things. Annie. Beautiful. Yeah. So it's a drawing instead of watercolor. We can't hear you. Yeah, you're all still on mute. You're still on mute. Mute. We yeah, uh, you there you go. Catch it there. as you do with pencil. Yay. Then you go over it with uh, an ink pen. And um, for different parts, you have to have you know, parallel lines or then hatch marks, parallel lines. And it's, it's, it develop, requires the development of real skill at, at drawing parallel lines with a pen. Um, oh, yeah. For that reason, I was always good at pen and ink in art school. I could get the shadows fun, but I, the shadows looked boring and they looked woven. I couldn't get the hang of keeping it, the shadows it, interesting. It's not easy. It takes real practice. I've done pages and pages of just parallel lines <laughs> in different directions. How much for pencil when it comes to that? <laughs> pencil well, is much easier. You just smudge in the shadows. Beth, are you making art right now? Not at the moment, I need to. I'm behind on a couple of um, commissioned drawings for Paul and Carol and Marshall, way behind actually. Mm. So I need to do that. Thank you for reminding me. Well, I'm anxious to see them when you get them done. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'd like Adelaide, to see are you Adelaide? Are you home? Or are you um in Maryland? I'm in Maryland, so <laughs> I'll be back Thursday, and I'm going to need to sign off. So good seeing everyone. Good to see you. Bye bye. Bye, -bye. Great to see you. You too. Bye. Yeah. I'm about to nod off here. Well, I'm going to sign off too, but it was good to see everybody on Zoom. I haven't been on Zoom in a while, so it's yeah. good to see Tony, Jeannie, and Peggy. Thank you, Anna. Absolutely. I just want to say again how much I enjoyed the piano. This oh morning. yeah. So beautiful. Just, just beautiful. Actually, that's a new piece for me that I just discovered when a um, student wanted to play the first movement and I looked at the second movement and thought, wow, this is perfect for the Lenten season. Um, perfect mm -hmm. for just about any occasion. So yeah, I had a good reason to learn it. Beautiful. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna head out too. Me too. Me too. Bye. Bye. Have a good day. Have a great lunch. You too. Did anybody see the snow this morning? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. Didn't have any in Thomasville. It's just just a tiny, tiny, tiny rain. Just a little bit. Just it, it's, it's still on the top roof of my gazebo. Very oh. charming. <laughs> yeah. But it's there. That was fun. Yeah. Good to see you, Francie. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye-bye.
Bye.